Hello again, welcome to Kimmel Bay Church's vlog. Today we are on another of Jesus' parables, and it's the parable of the wine dressers or the evil farmers. We read from Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 to 41. There's much enthusiasm these days for growing your own fruit and vegetables. But if your garden's small, some people um, choose to have an allotment. They pay a rent and they put in all the hard work to prepare the land. And at the end of the growing season, the fruits of their labours belong to the gardeners, not the owner of the land. In our reading today, a certain landowner planted a vineyard built a wall round it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the land out to attend to tenant farmers, or vine dressers, as some versions say, and went away. Some versions say he went to a far country, others on a journey, um, others just that he went away. A vineyard was a long-term investment, and it could be four years before it produced a return. The owner in our parable prepared it well for his tenants. He built a wall around it to protect it from wild animals or thieves. And the wine press would consist of two basins cut out of rock or cut out from the soil and then lined with stones and a layer of plaster to seal it. One basin would be higher up than the other, with a channel leading down to the lower basin. This was so that when the grapes had been trodden in the upper basin, the juice would run down into the lower basin and then be left to ferment for some time. A long-term investment, as I said before. A watchman would be in the tower, keeping watch to make sure all was well. It was a well-equipped vineyard. Jesus is saying that it represents Israel, a well-protected and cared-for people. Jeremiah 30 verse 22 tells us that God said to Israel, You will be my people and I will be your God. There was a covenant relationship between them. The custom in the Middle East was that a landowner would not expect rent from his tenant farmers, tenant farmers but at the end of the growing season, he would claim half of all that they produced. The problem here was that as the vines flourished and were weighted down with grapes, the farmers saw no reason to share their profit, the profits of their labours when the vine was ready. The landowner sent his servants to collect his share. One was beaten, one was killed, and the other stoned. So the landowner sent a larger group next time. But the farmers were expecting them and they were ready to chase them off. Again, beating them, killing, stoning them. Finally, he sent his son. Surely, he said, they will respect my son. When they saw him coming, they said, this is the heir. Maybe they thought something had happened to the landowner because he'd been away for a while. This is why his heir was coming. And so they decided that he had to go. They cried, kill him and the estate will be ours. So they grabbed him and dragged him out of the vineyard and they murdered him. They had to take him out of the vineyard to kill him or the vineyard would have been declared unclean after death and would have been no use to them. They had everything planned, didn't they? Jesus looked at the religious leaders and challenged them with a question. When the owner of the vineyard returns, he asked, what do you think he will do to those farmers? No hesitation, full of righteous anger, they replied. He will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him a share of the crop after each harvest. I have to stop here. My reading finishes at verse 41. But do read on to hear Jesus' reply. The landowner in this parable is God. The vineyard was the people of Israel. 
the religious leaders were the farmers or vine dressers. The servants represented the prophets whom God had sent over centuries, really, in the past, and who had been treated as these servants were treated. Jeremiah was beaten, Zechariah was stoned, John the Baptist was beheaded, and there were others who suffered in a similar way. The sun represents Jesus himself. In Mark 12, the next servant, we read, the next servant he sent was killed. Others he sent were either beaten or killed until there was only one left, his son whom he loved dearly. And this was the first time Jesus had claimed to be the son of God. The Old Testament is full of warnings of the consequences of a people taking God's provision, his goodness, for granted and turning their backs on him. The religious leaders were a law unto themselves, as our study tells us. They were using Israel, God's vineyard, as their own, pursuing their own ends and purposes throughout God's nation. They were using it to enrich and empower themselves rather than to produce the fruit for which God had designed it to be a holy nation, an example to the world of a people serving God in every aspect of life and worship. And this is still happening today, isn't it? It's particularly sad when a church loses its way and doesn't preach the true gospel message because they want to be popular. It's equally sad when church leaders seek popularity and publicity for the wrong reasons. We've seen high-profile evangelists in the past brought down low because they've forgotten whom they're serving, Jesus Christ. We've just spent Holy Week remembering the sadness of Good Friday, the joy and hope of the resurrection on Easter Sunday, the waiting of Easter Saturday. As a church, we are called to serve under God's leadership as his people, called to produce fruit by transforming lives and by being his light in the community in the community where the church is but also around and in our own neighborhoods we're called to introduce jesus to those who don't know him that lives might be transformed jesus told the people of israel that if they didn't listen and accept all that it meant to be his covenant people they would no longer be his and his message would go to the Gentiles, meaning, that, meaning those who were not Jews. And this is what happened, and why the church spread worldwide. But the message is still the same. In John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 5, we read, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. As Christians, we don't live for our own self-glory. We live to serve and glorify the one and only sovereign God and his kingdom. If you are not sure what it means to be a Christian, or if you do want to know more, please contact us, either in person in church or on our website. We'd love to meet up with you. But thank you for joining us today and God bless you.